Hiya, welcome back to the channel. And today we are working on this. It's a Reynolds cap shite. And the issue with it is, well, it seems to be a relatively, I say common, but not uncommon issue, which I will demonstrate. First, we need to open the bonnet. Eesh. All right, so we lift this up. And we are greeted by what appears to be a peanut with pipes on it in the engine bay. And that the eater keeps on stopping working. And the expansion tank is going low. Um, and then sometimes it sort of fills itself back up when you let the lid off. That's only when it's just been that's only when it's just been driven. You know, it's warm, but it's been parked up a little bit this. But it is low on coolant. Um, and it seems to be that there are numerous reports of coolant loss on these engines. It's a 0.9 TC, so that's a 900 cc with like a baby turbo on it to give you 90 horsepower and a thrill ride. Anyway, this one, if you take this off, I mean it just pulls off sort of. Set that off. At that end. Now you can see that we have, hold on, you can't see, but you can now, that we have coolant residing upon the gearbox. And the issue is, let's see if we can get it where we can see. Focus your shitter. So it's leaking from around this area. And on the end of the cylinder head, there is a plastic, like a housing. It's not a thermostat housing, but it's similar to a thermostat housing. And it is leaking. It seems that it's quite common. And I suspect it's corrosion that's built up between the two, but I've got a new one. So I'm gonna put that on, which looks like a ball ache. So as I mentioned, I have bought a part, or we've got a part, genuine Renault part for this vehicle. And unfortunately it appears to be the incorrect one because this one has got, I don't even know what the fuck that is, but it's got one of them on it and this one doesn't. You put them next to each other, you know, they're sort of the same until you get to the, and then it all goes horribly wrong. But all is not lost because I'll get some light bulb action down there. Then, oh, by the way, I've got a cold, which is why I keep on sniffling, so I do apologise for that. You, know, you might not catch it through the screen, but I don't know. If you do, I'm sorry. Um, Fucking hell. Right, the coolant is leaking from around it by the looks of it. It seems to be leaking right around it. If you look, there's... See down there? That is evidence of a slow leak, which has got faster. Um, and it's leaking from the perimeter of where it attaches. Uh, last time I looked at this one, I actually originally looked at it and bled the coolant up. It wasn't leaking anywhere near as much as this. In fact, there wasn't any water to see. It was just dry and crystals to see. But now it has confirmed that it is, in fact, pissing out. So, yeah, I'm going to take it off and have a look at the gasket. Right, so as far as access goes, it doesn't look horrendous. It just looks a bit fiddly. But the thing that appears to be the most in the way is this air box. I'm hoping that I've taken the pipe off the intake there and there's a 10 milli there. And I'm hoping that when I remove these, the airbox will lift out of place. Probably won't do because it's French, but I'm hoping it will. Right, so that's the nut, well, the bolt removed and it appears to be in some sort of big... Yes! So that just comes off. It appears to be in some sort of big rubber grommet down there which to be honest with you now that's come off i didn't think that came off now that's come off might not need to make any difference taking that off might it not but let's see if it comes off anyway yes it appears that it actually does so I'll move this pipe out of the way and the airbox will hopefully just ease out lovingly and a bit of manipulation and a bit of swearing later the uh, box is removed probably should remove the battery to remove it but i didn't right, so now we have gained a little bit of access and it's time to 
unplug shit and disconnect pipes, which there's a temperature sensor. Um, I don't know what that is. So let's do it gearbox breather or some description by the looks of it. Let's get that down there and forget about it. Um, temperature sensor, like I said, that's out of the way. Uh, numerous pipes. This is a back line, which look at that. That is just brilliant, right? Can we see now? Right. Temperature sensor is unplugged. We've got to disconnect all the pipes, and this is a back line. Now this, this here, this is for the. It goes to the expansion tank. You follow it. it goes to the top of the expansion tank. Uh, looks like it should pull out of there. But I'm going to get two hands on that and be careful with it before I snap something. So I'm going to get on with taking all this shit off, all these pipes and whatnot. Right, so the key here is going to be to remove as much shit as possible. So I've taken that back line off there, which I've just left up there for now. But I'm going to take this off. I've also unplugged that, which is tucked in front of the battery. Uh, so I'm going to take a few of these things off. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take this bracket off. This looks like a 12 mil or a 13 mil or some shit. I'm going to take them off, and I think that will help a lot. Which leaves us with much more room, um, and everything is sort of neatly orientated, ready to be placed back on. Um, this little clip goes onto the and shit like that. And the beauty about filming this for YouTube is I can look back at it myself to remember where shit went. Uh, in the meantime, let's take some pipes off. Now, when I've done this, I will need to bleed. When I put this back on, I will need to put the coolant afterwards, which there is one there, and there is one there. And there are coolant bleeds, what we'll need later. But for now, we're not bothered about bleeding it, we're just gonna let it empty. So I'll pull some more pipes off. Uh, there's one there, um, that's a little pip, which needs taking off there as well because it's in a little clip do for my jig. So that is one pipe off. Another pipe needs disconnecting. There's that one there. So we've got a few pipes to take off. One, two, three, four. Another one there. In fact, pipes are everywhere. Yeah, there's this shit loads of pipes to take off. And we're getting there. I think we've got one more pipe left. Which I haven't done yet. Uh, this one here. This one you have to squeeze. If you look at the where it goes onto, which you can't really see because it's big stupid shit is in the way, whatever it is. But where that goes onto, it doesn't have a jubilee clip, it just squeezes. Like a fuel pipe kind of but squeeze and pull, just be careful. And if it won't come off, then you can always take it off from the Eater Matrix side, and that's where it goes. Uh I've got one more pipe to take off, I think, yeah, around the back. Which looks pretty awkward without the right tools, but I'm gonna struggle on with my uh, incorrect tools. So, as you can see, I've taken a majority of the pipes off. Um, there is two that are still on, though, I think two down at the back. But that should give me enough wriggle room because I haven't got a new unit, so I'm taking it out and cleaning and, and having a look at the gasket. I think the I think it's corroded between the two surfaces. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. So, for me, if you're changing this, you're gonna have to take the mother pipes off, which might be easy to do once you've unbolted it anyway, because they're a little bit awkward, awkward to access, unless you've got the right tools for it. Anyway, I'm hoping I don't need to take them off. So I'm gonna take these six 10 millimeters out, three along the top, three along the bottom, which should let me lovingly move this housing away from the head. And the last one. As you can see now, it's becoming free to move. Can. Uh, last bolt removed. Right, let's have a look at where it's leaking from. Yeah. So. If you look at that gasket, it doesn't appear to be uh, sitting proud of the uh, of the plastic very well. 
and then down here let's have a look at the metal that doesn't look too bad but i'm gonna give that a quick clean as well right so i'm gonna give that surface a little bit of a clean up i don't know if anyone remembers or watched the video where i changed the thermostat on the shift gun and i had to do it twice because i didn't do that and i was trying to cut corners uh, also while i'm here also just point out they are the pipes now one of them just goes into a circle to itself but there is you know a couple of pipes that do if you're taking this unit off there are other pipes still connected oh there is a other pipe still connected which you could take off once it's loose easier than doing it when it's in place i'm not taking that off though because i'm not actually changing the full unit i'm just gonna clean it up and reseal it which i'm gonna do now which leaves us with a much nicer smoother prepared surface to um to seal against um and also we have got a replacement gasket because i don't know if you couldn't really see this before but on that surface there was its first share of corrosion which i've cleaned off now i don't know if that was visible in earlier stages of the video but it was there and this gasket if you look at this sort of from if you look it just doesn't it doesn't even sit proud of the plastic housing so it's not going to seal perfectly the way that it is I'll pull that out nicely and then we do have a replacement gasket and hopefully we'll put that next to that it is thicker so it should seal against the head uh, so obviously i've given this a quick wipe off because well why wouldn't you while it's in bits uh, and this new replacement gasket i'm just going to put into place so that it causes a watertight seal between the coolant system and the exterior environment so if you look at this now this is what we didn't have before and that's pushed all the way in the rubber well, well silicon whatever it's made out of the gasket shit is now sat proud so when we put it back on it's compressing something and causing a seal so that should be all there is to it time to put it back together which as you can probably imagine is the same as taking it apart but backwards so i'll put them six bolts back in there first uh, make sure that the gasket stays in as you do it which evidently it has so far so we'll put them bolts in and then connect everything back up right, so we've got it all back in place and these bolts these 10 mils they're all in they all just need tightening up a little ratchet now they don't need to be stupid tight i haven't got a torch setting but just you know you tighten them plastic housing up with a 10 milli bolt so you, know, you start to get a feel for if it's tight enough yet so don't comment asking me for, for the torch setting because i haven't researched the torch setting for myself so i'm not going to research the torch setting to answer your question about the torch setting you know just it's a 10 milli nut a 10 milli bolt with a plastic housing going into aluminium you know you just get a feel for these sort of things and we'll go around and tighten all the rest of them up too about that torch setting like so so everything all these bolts are now tightened up and it's all nipped up and it's just a case of building everything back up so we've got this remember this one that just squeezes off that just pushes back on got a little o-ring in it which sure that's on properly we've got various pipes to reconnect uh, that one which goes that goes above it so this one which goes onto here this one which goes onto here it's got a little clip which if you remember i've pushed out with the pliers before so that needs now this is one of them clips that sort of re if you look at it it locks itself open until you release it like so so anyway put everything back on where you got it from 
connect all the uh, hose clips back how they came off. Look at that. I'm using the complete wrong pliers here, but going getting the right ones is that means walking about 50 yards. So fuck it, I'll just carry on struggling. Yes. You might want to fast forward this bit because it's going to get frustrating because I'm just going to film the whole thing of me struggling with these incorrect pliers. Oh, got it close. Oh no, let's take it off. We're going to start again. Yes. Sorry, that was just a bit impulsive. Yeah. Still filming. Yeah, I'm not going to take it off again. There's another one on. Nice and tight. Now don't forget this big shitter. It needs squeezing as I put it into place. Unless I pull that clip up there, which I can't bother doing. And that is most of the water pipes back plumbed in. I've not put this back system back on yet. I've not put this little, the water it's got the expansion tank to the top of it uh, i haven't plugged any of this in yet because next i need to put this bracket back on and if you look at it it has like a little finger that sticks out to finger that all there and then the bolt goes on there the 13 milli so i put that on next like so once again talking it up to the correct torque setting and reconnecting various wires and shit which that needs to go underneath there there is on that bracket there's a little plug for that to go into that plugs into there that you can see on the head there's a mark where that went onto so that grips onto there all back where it came from so that's all happy and that leaves us with this silly little vacuum arrangement um some sort of vacuum solenoid which uh, i don't know if it's a shark or a, va a dyson or what but it's Needs all connecting back up to where it comes from anyway. And then there is two, wherever the fuck they are, two little allen bolts which hold it on one at the top and the bottom. And just lovingly tighten these up. I am aware that this is becoming a bit of like a serious tutorial, which is quite boring. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, not to forget this doofer. Um, and this, this doofer, which clips into that doofer, and that clips into there, and I don't think we've got much left to do now, apart from putting the airbox back in and filling it full of water. So let's fill it full of coolant. We've got some, this is a ready mix red antifreeze and it goes into the ready, ready mix red antifreeze orifice on the vehicle so we'll put some of that in there nice and lovingly and well might as well just fill it up because it's going to use some more when i bleed it up anyway Probably should check it's not leaking out all over the floor now. I've left the holes off before filling it to the top, but that's not my style. It doesn't seem to be leaking out. Right, so as I said before, there is a bleed screw here. It needs to be undone. Fucking hell, that's tight. Carefully undo that. It's like a tyre valve cap actually. Make sure the whole thing doesn't twist inside. Right, so that's undone. You don't need to take it all the way off actually, but I'm going to do that to give me a good visual representation of the coolant coming through. If you can see it's just draining out of there now because it's rapidly making its way over here. There we go. 
let's put that back on. And put a bit more in here. Bit over full again, doesn't really matter, there's still more to come out. And we have another one there. Going to the heater matrixes. Once again, two types one do with I've got it. I said two types one do with greasy fingers. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, seems to have stopped. That's weird. Right, well, let's start it up. So to turn the vehicle on, we have established ourselves inside of the cockpit and it hasn't got a normal key or a normal ignition because well for a start it's a relatively new car and secondly it's just a Renault so it's not got many redeeming features to start with and I'm not even joking right the C1 would smoke this shitter not even joking it would but I've just sussed this out as well I just noticed this I thought this might be the case because it's a new car you've got to press the clutch to start the shitter what a dumb idea. I mean, you've got to press the clutch, so you're effectively loading up all the thrust washers at the front of the crankshaft, pushing the clutch against it with no oil pressure. Who thought that was a good idea? Anyway, enough ranting, let's go and bleed the piece of shit up. Now we are back around the front of the car with the engine running. So, just to make sure that we have got a good circulation of water or cooling. Make sure, yes. Yes. Right there, that seems to have stopped with the air and it seems to be all coolant, so put that back on and do the same. Make sure that's tight, can't really do it all bit full as well, but do the same for this shit. This is the I'll do the same thing with that one. Yes, that's also working. As you would hope. So, that should be bled up. Let's get it warm. Make sure the level stays the same. Put the airbox back in. That's all that time to carry on. And that should be it. So we've confirmed that the heater is working and what have you. Engine's not up to temperature yet, but we'll knock it off. And we'll put the airbox back on. And this has to sort of shoe warm back in down there, um, where it came from, which I'm going to need two hands for that. But it, it come out. So it should go back in really. I'm hoping not to have to take the battery off. Uh, but it's sort of like wedged, like yeah. And then just hit it in. Which actually goes back in a lot easier than what it came out, to be honest with you. Uh, don't forget to put it back in the grommet there. You've got a grommet at the back to push it into, and you've got a bolt to put it into. Uh, we've got some fittings and connections and pipes to put back on. Which, uh, Just all clips together like Lego to be honest with you, but worse quality. I mean Lego's Lego's good though, innit? Anyway, that should be it. Um I say it doesn't seem to be leaking. Won't know for a bit until it boils over on motorway or something. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be leaking and seems to be heaters working, all happy. So I would say that that appears to be a success. And I'm gonna leave it at that. So I do apologise for somewhat of a boring, moderately useful video for a change to somebody who's suffering with this problem. Uh, well, normal service will resume at some point in the future. And we'll start fucking shit up like normal. So, anyway, that's it. See you next time.